Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Out of Spec Podcast. I'm your host, Francie. I'm here behind the camera. I'll go this way because we can't film everything at Charin because in the festival, because it's, you know, a little bit low key, as you'll see in our other podcasts that we have from this event. But today I am joined by one of my old colleagues. So, Jeremy, how do you say your last name? Bebo. Bebo. Jeremy Bebo. I thought it's the best last name ever. Honestly. Thank you. Jeremy Bebo. <laughs> and uh, you have another Jeremy in the back there that people might recognize from another recent EVgo interview from the podcast where mm -hmm. Katie and Jeremy really dived into, I mean, basically where EVgo is today. They were at the LA Auto Show, which they always are. Y'all always are. But mm -hmm. now we're at a different event that is like so different from the LA Auto Show, I yeah. gotta say. Yeah. So uh, we're here at the Charin Testival, which is super important. We work on interoperability between various EVSCs or charging stations and all sorts of electric vehicles. There's pre-production vehicles, there's existing ones, um, vehicles with new software, just anything that we can test to make sure that charging is as seamless as possible for drivers. That's what we're here to do. Okay, cool. So you focus mostly on interoperability, am yes. I right? Okay, so what does that mean? Yeah, so interoperability is a term that basically means that any EV should be operable with any EVSE. And it's a lot more complex uh, in, in this sort of environment where we have digital communications going between vehicles and charging stations. There's standards that have to be implemented and sometimes they can be implemented incorrectly or differently. And our goal here is to just make sure that everything is interoperable, that no matter which station you plug into with an EV, it's going to charge the way you expect it to. Right, because EVgo, you know, really wants electric for all. So that exactly. Means that if someone pulls up to your stations, you want them to be able to charge. So that's what mm -hmm. inter interoperability means. Is there, um, am I right in thinking that there's also another sense of interoperability in other parts of the industry that you experiment with today? Or is it mostly focused between the EVs that pull up to your station and plug in and EVgo? Yeah, there's, there's other types of interoperability. Um, one, for example, is different charging companies being interoperable with each other. There's roaming, uh, which is a topic that a lot of people focus on. Um, interoperability also is very important with plug-in charge, which uh, if you're unfamiliar with the term, it's basically allows people to plug in, payment is authorized, and it starts charging without you ever having to swipe a card or press an app or anything like that. And so there's a lot of moving parts in that that needs to be looked at from all players in the market. There's you know people from the charging station companies and the vehicle companies, but also people who manage PKIs or um, different roaming platforms. There's so many different players in the market and we all have to work together to make it work. Very cool. So you mentioned plug and charge, but does EVgo do plug and charge or do they only do auto charge plus? So we currently have auto charge plus deployed uh, on our entire fleet of chargers, but we're working currently on getting plug and charge to be available uh, for more people. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be really great for a lot of the new cars on the market that are going to be able to support ISO 15118-2, which has plug-in charge. And so that's one of the big things we're working on here is making sure that that works with uh, as many vehicles as possible. Right, because Auto Charge Plus is different in the way that it uses the Mac ID. So basically, when the car plugs in, that's how it identifies it so that you can authenticate the session and you can just start charging when you plug mm -hmm. in, which is quite different from plug-in charge, you'd say? Yeah, so um, it's essentially... it's. Plug and charge uses certificates, which is similar to what the internet uses uh, for security. And it's just another way to be able to authenticate without someone having to, to identify themselves externally. And so they're very similar in the way that they operate. Everything that goes on behind the scenes is very different and we wanna be able to support both ways. Yeah, very cool. I think you explained that pretty well, like briefly as well. So you're here at the Testival hosted by Charin, and like you said, you're testing this interoperability. So what does that really mean? What charges do you have here? And then what EV do we have here? And what is going on with these folks in the background? What are they testing? Yeah. What's going on? So this is our uh, 350 kilowatt unit. It's a simultaneous charger. Um, you can use both connectors at once um, on different vehicles. And currently we're testing with a test system um, that is really important for interoperability because they help us to identify problems um, in this case, they really focus on accuracy of our energy um, dispense, dispensing, mm. uh, which is super important as well, especially as more drivers kind of join the EV universe. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, right now we're, we've found problems on our end, we found problems on their end, we've fixed problems on both sides, and it's actually really productive. So this, that's exactly what we're here for, is to find these bugs and squash them, and uh, it's, it's been really successful so far. Very cool that this is an opportunity to come 
and that's what I've heard from like a lot of people around here today that are here testing is that everyone's finding bugs. Maybe mm -hmm. it's on their end, maybe it's on the other end. But yeah. the whole goal is to like identify them and kind of share this information, would you say? Like it's a lot of just collaboration. Yeah, it's a super collaborative industry. Like everybody wants everybody to succeed. You'll see engineers from EVgo at other you know, companies that would be considered competitors and we're trying to help each other to just achieve a common goal. Yeah. And so it's just such a collaborative industry, which is really nice to be a part of. Yeah, it's really important to if we're going to get anywhere where it's like this yeah. is the most solid way to charge. It's like you yeah. gotta share that information. Because that's the goal, you know, we're all here to, to, you know, save the planet and make mobility as clean as possible. And we want to make the transition for people from gas vehicles to electric vehicles to be as seamless as possible and you know i think we're all here to work together on that yeah definitely and we're to, to, to get a little bit techie here so mm -hmm. like you said you have the test the tester in the middle right this yeah which is not an ev but it it mimics what it's like in right. EV pulling in so what is the benefit of using that and then maybe against using an ev or like yeah what are the yeah they both have their own their own benefits so using a test system like this we can manipulate some of the communications uh between the the ev and the evsc or in this case it's a test system um we're able to capture more data in between as a result uh so there's a lot of benefits to using a test system it's going to be great for conformance which is kind of the partner with interoperability in in a perfect world, we're going to be focusing on both. But if we can all conform to a common standard and then test together, it'll be perfect. And these test systems help with that. But then working with the vehicles specifically, we can actually identify real world problems that we're going to find that drivers will experience and try to hopefully find them before drivers ever get them. And then even if something's already been deployed to the field, uh, most vehicles can do over the air updates pretty much every charger can do over the air updates and we fix these things uh, basically in real time as people have these cars. Very cool. So I know that you spend most of your days in the innovation lab, which is like mm -hmm. EVgo's test lab. So how does your work on the day to day relate to what is going on at this event? Yeah, so okay. I mean, at the at the innovation lab for EVgo, we actually do this on a much smaller scale um, every day. We we invite our uh, OEM partners, and I, I don't just mean partners as people that EVgo works with, but every vehicle manufacturer. Uh, we invite them to the lab, we perform all of this testing, uh, we're, we're very open about what data we share with them because we want to be able to find these problems. So this stuff is actually pretty similar to what we do in the innovation lab every day, just on a much larger scale, which is really good because it, it brings everyone to one place and you can get a lot done in a short amount of time. Uh, but, you know, at the Innovation Lab, we, we do lots of other things as, you know, software development, uh, verification testing of our chargers. We want to make sure whenever we get new firmware or software, we run it through full regression testing, make sure everything that used to work still works and everything we tried to make work also works. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great place to be able to push the company and the industry forward. Yeah, it's really cool. I've been there, of course, and we'd love mm -hmm. to go there as the out of spec team, you know, and really see because <laughs> it's, it's, it really is. I mean, you're working every day on the hardware in your mm -hmm. lab. You know, you bring, like you said, the cars in that are going to be on the road to try to highlight what might come along. And so it's important to have that collaboration too, not only between other charge point operators and of course manufacturers of the mm -hmm. chargers as well, but the OEMs too. So um, in terms of cooperation among the industry, what do you think is the most important part? Like, is it events like this? Is it just the small scale of EVgo that is really going to play a role in like pushing it so that EV charging is the best experience that you can have. Right. I think the the next biggest step that needs to happen is uh, a lot of this, you know, standard conformance that everybody can just, you know, we have standards that we work off of, but there might be holes in them or there might be different interpretations of them. So just having some sort of conformance testing that everybody can agree on uh, will really help take a huge step. And then once we have that, we continue to do everything we're doing because every small step helps to to make it easier for drivers. So, you know, once once we have conformance brought up to the same level as the effort we're putting into interoperability, uh, I think it'll help the whole industry a lot. Can you speak to at all the role that EVgo plays in pushing that conformance or like coming to oh, an definitely. agreement in the industry? Yeah, yeah, we're 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 big on working in in all of that collaborative space. Uh, EVgo sits on lots of different working groups for SAE and other standards organizations. We're a part of ChargeX, which is a consortium of all different companies, the same ones that are here, 
uh, working on improving charger reliability. Obviously, we're a part of Charin, which is another um, organization that works on that same common goal. Our CTO is even a board member here. So EVgo is very involved in, in all of these different industry groups that help drive it forward. Very cool. I think I've said very cool a lot, but that's because it is <laughs> that's cool. That's because it is I mean, very cool. It really cool. is very cool. There's so much testing going on today, which is really fun to get into the nitty gritty bits. And of course, a question that I have that we spoke to a little bit on the other podcast, but North American charging standards. So a lot of folks today are also, that's where it's going. I'm sure they're testing that in one way or another, but mm -hmm. is EVgo at Charon testing any next stuff? So we did not bring any NAX connectors with us for this uh, event, but it's something that we're definitely looking forward to implementing. Um, obviously, the vehicle manufacturers have kind of all moved in a wave towards that, and EVgo has always been connector agnostic. We want to bring charging for all. We don't necessarily want to push just CCS or just Chatmo or just NAX. We want to be able to support every driver. So if everybody's moving to NAX, then we're here to move along with it. So at the next uh, at the next test event, which hopefully is early next year, we'll uh, we'll definitely have that available, and uh, hopefully we can test with a lot of vehicles that have that available as well. So next time, NAX, next time. next time. Okay, cool. <laughs> we can look forward to that and seeing how that goes. I'm sure it's going to be really cool to figure out exactly. I mean, you're going to have to be sourcing your you know hardware and everything, yeah. and seeing what works best, who's the best suppliers, because I think that's yeah, exactly, a yeah. And, too. and EVgo is, is, it's really important to us that these connectors work well. Um, we actually just published a connection quali connection, connector qualification test, hard one, um, that we want people to use to be able to thoroughly vet these connectors and make sure they're going to be safe for our users. We follow the standard and then go an extra 10 yards because we want to make sure that there's never going to be an issue for any driver um, you know, some of these stations are, are no joke with the high power and it's something we need for these vehicles and connector is the connector is the number one thing that people work with. Mm -hmm. So whether it's a NAX connector or a CCS connector, you know, we're, we're thoroughly testing them and making sure it'll be safe. Yeah. Speaking of where it's going with NAX, there's also like I, more and more EVs coming onto the road that are going to have that higher voltage mm -hmm. capability. So are you testing that today either, or is that a future? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, this station, for example, and most of our stations <laughs> go up to a thousand volts, which is uh, more than, than any car currently has. And we're, you know, as people go to high voltage, we hope to be future proof in that sense. Nice. So. That's something we test today. Whether it's a NAX connector or a CCS connector, it's something we'll continue to test. All right, so up to 1,000 volts on most sta most stations, or? Yeah, um, somewhere between 920 and 1,000 volts will be the max on most of our stations. Cool, yeah. and is that like, it will be at a certain point or like today? No, that that's today. Awesome. Yeah, we have some legacy stuff that's still lower voltage. Um, you know, EVgo is one of the first yeah. companies to produce public DC fast charging. So we have some legacy units that might not support that high voltage, but a majority of our units do. Very cool. Um, so yeah, thanks for giving us like a brief, you can see that now better, that tester over there, which is yeah. really cool. It's like just a transportable test device for this right. really large hardware. So you don't yeah. have to have an EV, which is cool. And it's cool that you can manipulate it and really like yeah. test around with what you're yeah. looking for. And this one in particular is uh, one of their main goals is to make sure that there's accuracy in the metering and that's to make sure that drivers are paying for what they're actually getting. Mm, you know, nice. if, if there's no, uh, if there's no requirements for how we measure this energy, then yeah. drivers could be getting overcharged, undercharged, mm. and, and we don't want that to be the case. We want to make sure that they're yeah. paying for exactly what they're getting, and that's what we're testing here. That is really important that you hope is definitely as a, just a customer pulling up. Exactly. That you're being charged the fair price. Yeah. So, yeah, really cool. <laughs> um, from today, what are, have been, or the week, I guess you were here yesterday as well, mm -hmm. but the big, do you have any big highlight or low light or both? I would say What's your uh, rose and your thorn. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm, I'll start with a highlight for for EVgo. Uh, we have been able to successfully test a lot of our plug and charge capabilities, which is a huge step for us. Um, it's something that's been around for a while, but people are just starting to work on, and uh, it's really exciting to see that you know actually working. Personally, it's something I've been working on for a while at the company, and so starting to see that uh, that testing work out is is a is a big highlight for us. Super cool. Uh, low light. <laughs> Every low light still has a highlight. I mean, I mean uh, that's the attitude. <laughs> you can see we've got we were, we're plugged into a, a, a Honda Clarity over here, and uh, it wasn't exactly working before. And we made a bug fix, and now it's working. So it was a low light when it wasn't working, and uh, and now it is. That's so. the whole point, right? Is kind of find the low lights, the huh, get stumped, figure it out. Exactly. So yeah. And in this case, there. it was you know 
we know we're operable with a Honda Clarity, but here at the Testival, we're always trying new things. Yeah. And they were trying new things that yeah. stumped us, and then we found it. So. Cool. It's just a lot of problem solving. <laughs> exactly. That's what we're Very cool. Well, thank you for giving me, yeah, an overview of what EVgo is doing here um, and why it's so important for you all to be at this event and other charge point operators to be here because there's always more iterations, more problems to solve yeah. to make sure that if it arises, it's being addressed like before, right before it gets to the customer. Yeah, basically. before it gets to them. Yeah, for the customer, we want this to be easier than filling up a gas tank. So, is there another event like this coming up before the next charm that y'all will be at, or is this um, like the test event? This is this is kind of the test event. There will be other smaller ones that people are a part of, um, and of course, we're always bringing people to the innovation lab. Um, but yeah, I know there will be a few more of these next year that Charn will put on, and, and EVgo hopes to be there and, and you know continue to push this forward. Thank you so much for your time. No problem. It's cool to see you in Cleveland, Ohio. Usually I would see you at the LA lab. I know, yeah, it's a little colder here, but yeah. It's quite a bit colder. <laughs> yeah, so thank you, Jeremy. It was really awesome to see you and speak with you. And um, thanks for joining us on the Out of Spec podcast. No problem. Anytime. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We'll see you next time.